Oh, not bad. Any a chance to get set up to get on the hook, too? Yeah, maybe I should not have it What time do I start? Um, you've got, I mean, you've got to 5.10 if you need a minute to set up. Okay. Jonesing for a drink. I mean, just like you primed us, Amanda. Like, I'm like, oh, geez, it's, it's five o'clock, it's a good time. I didn't make the schedule. <laughs> All right, Luke. Um, um, do you want me to introduce myself? I'll introduce you, man. Oh. Uh, I got a joke planned. Oh, I so I, well, I had jokes planned too, so. You can speak got, you got 20 Well, okay, you just do your thing and I'll do mine. All right, banter. Um, <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, uh, our next presenter uh, last year graduated with his MA here from the University of Georgia. Uh, he's currently doing his PhD work at the University of Arizona. Uh, but we've all been really excited to have him back this week, all of us Lashuga members. Uh, it's been really great to see him. And I know that uh, at least Rachel Kim is very excited that it's a very temporary visit. <laughs> so please welcome Lucian. Thank you. Great. Well, uh, it's nice to finally, s for those of you who don't know, I was the guy emailing you. So, you know, I'm that Luke, just in case, you know, now you know me. Um, yeah, yeah, that too. Um, so anyway, uh, what I want to talk about is, um, so I, I'm told I'm a syntactician. I don't have handouts, but I'm told that I'm one. Um, so I'm going to talk sort of about syntax, but really about how much I don't like it. Um, so we'll just start. Actually, let's, um, Vera and Tim aren't here, right? Okay, good. Um, <laughs> okay, pull, quick poll. Uh, who here, whose first experience with syntax in a syntax class was an enjoyable experience which enlightened their view of language and you feel like you actually learned, okay, you got, to, you got a good, some people in here, that, that's more than I expected. Uh, other question, um, how many people actually under, can look at a syntax article and actually understand what's going on without reading it like five times? <laughs> okay, okay, well. Several liars. Um, so anyway, uh, so you know, you get into syntax class and you see all these magical trees and you have all these magical concepts like functional categories, covert movements, specifiers. I don't, I don't even know what a specifier is. No one does. Uh, C commanding, A bar movement, Quidditch, Horcruxes, feature checking, Death Eaters, and you start wondering like, what is science and what is you know like it, it's when you step in a syntax class, it's like stepping into some sort of séance or something like that. Uh, so that's the feeling I get at least. Um, now, one of the problems, I think, is that syntax has been burdened with some very unfortunate books, uh, like uh, syntactic structures, aspects of a theory of syntax, Cartesian linguistics, and a couple others. Um, now, I have no idea what the common denominator behind all of these books are, <laughs> but I, I, th I think they all share the same sort of muddy-headedness, and I'd like to sort of elucidate what I think is the problem with all of them. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here. Uh, so the flaw. What's the flaw? Um, so there's this diagram that I show in every presentation because it's like a really annoying one. And it's called the reverse Y uh, model of grammar. Uh, and basically the idea is that syntax is the core of language. Uh, syntax produces a bunch of strings in language. Uh, and it becomes sound or meaning. So on one side it becomes the, uh, uh, the, the phonetic string, it goes to the mo motor system and it becomes phonetic, what you enunciate. On the other hand, it goes uh, into part of the conceptual system, it becomes meaning. Now the problem with this, I'm not going to even talk about sound and meaning here, the problem is that there's nothing up here. That is, there's nothing that feeds into syntax. And that's a huge problem that you might not necessarily uh, you know, realize. So classic generative grammar models uh, 
language as a random generator. Uh, that's to say that it, they think of it as a machine, or they, it's not even people think about it, it's just it's modeled as a machine that produces random sentences uh, from a grab bag of words. And the objective is to make a system that can produce all grammatical utterances of a language and rule out all ungrammatical uh, utterances. So first off, this is obviously not how the mind works. So what happens when you produce language is that you have an idea and your language faculty has some way of embedding this in uh, syntax and eventually enunciated words. Um, but if you model it like this, you end up with a bunch of problems that you don't actually need to solve. Um, just to you know, run through a couple of them, there are these things called selectional constraints like the harvest was clever to agree, the boy elapsed, sentences like this. Uh, traditionally, these were huge problems in syntax because no one really knew how you're supposed to solve for them in generative grammar. Because if syntax is the very core, how do you rule out anomalous sentences? And the, and the idea was, well, maybe there's this part of the syntax called selectional constraints that weed them out later in the der derivation or something like that. So the actual answer is that no one says these sentences because they don't make any sense. Why would you try to produce a sentence like this? There's not a derivation that's beginning and crashing. It's that it can't even start because no one wants to say this. Um, also, if you look at different categories, uh, uh, one of another Smith, not me, um, uh, one of my colleagues at Arizona ha has done this work on C selection, saying that basically C selection, which is thought to be this arbitrary aspect of syntax, can be boiled down basically entirely to semantics uh, and other things like that. So you don't need all of this sort of machinery. Um, and syntax ends up just recapitulating parts of uh, meaning. So what, what ends up happening is that you have this um, uh, semantic uh, syntax does stuff that other uh, parts of the mind are supposed to do, like, you know, make sense of the world. Uh, so to isolate the error, there's a, a very good article, very clear article called, uh, uh, well, it's wrong, but it's still clear, by Hauser, Chomsky, and Fitch, uh, 2002. This is the language evolution article. Uh, and it does well to distinguish what's called the broad language faculty from the narrow language faculty. So the broad narrow language faculty is everything that goes into play in our production of language, like our vocal apparatus or, you know, understanding of events, you know, everything we need in language. Well, the narrow language faculty is that extra element that makes humans capable of producing, uh, you know, uh, sentences in the way an ways animals can't. So biolinguistics and syntax are sort of in the search for whatever that narrow language faculty is, what that extra element is. So it's just an issue of, you know, so you have a chimpanzee, what do you add to it to create a human um, besides the bow tie? Um, like what extra mental element do you need to create sort of uh, a human-like uh, cognition? Uh, so, and how so Chomsky and Fit, Fitch identify this as what's called recursion or merge or generativity, a bunch of different words. Um, and their idea is this element called merge evolved in the human psyche or something like that. And what merge does it is it combines different mental elements. So you have conceptions of apples and Sally and eating. Uh, and so monkeys presumably have concepts of those things too. You do as well. But the unique thing about humans, according to Chomsky, is that there's this unique way of binding them together to produce uh, sort of new sentences, new expressions. Uh, and it's not just uh, as soon as 2002, if you look back, um, this is from Cartesian linguistics, Chomsky says sort of the same thing. Uh, linguistic and mental processes are virtually identical, language providing the primary means for free expression and thought and feeling, as well as for the functioning of creative ma imagination. So the idea is basically everything in our conscious mind comes about from this operation merge, and merge is tied into language. Um, so anyway, why is this obviously wrong? That's the main question. Um, now, they can't tell us, but pretty much all evidence shows that animals do have merge-like thought. Um, and uh, C.R. Gallistel has interesting work in this, uh, showing that really animals do have a conception of argument structure, of direct and direct objects, patience, stuff like that, of dyxis, of basic numeracy. Uh, they're, they're at least equivalent to people who have, um, uh, uh, you know, languages with uh, the primitive, quote-unquote, uh, numerals. Uh, and in fact, when you think about it, what's the use of having concepts of things if you can't merge them together? So if I have a concept of Lisa, what, it, what use is that concept if I can't think of Lisa eating something or doing something? You know, you have to, to make use of concepts, you have to be able to combine them together. Uh, oh yeah, and gener I like this example. Um, so generativity is all, in all human behaviors. So if you ever work at Waffle House, you don't ha actually have to be taught the 22 million ways to make a burger at Waffle House. What you're taught is a generative uh, operation. You perform a set of tasks 
in a recursive way to produce this hamburger to its specifications. And animals can do this too. Uh, I mean, maybe they can't make hamburgers, but they can do similar generative things. They can understand argument structure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and one of the things I like talking about is how uh, syntactic structure mirrors semantic structure. So this is something really weird if you assume merge. Because merge, so it combines linguistic elements, but it doesn't specify how they have to be combined. But there's a, actually a lot of rules as to what can be combined in language. Um, so the weird thing is that the structure of syntactic and semantic uh, derivations are eerily similar, as Barbiers puts it. Uh, there's one property that makes uh, you know, uh, generative grammar particularly uneconomical, namely the fact that X bar structure, um, yeah, you can read the rest, um, itself does not contribute to the semantic interpretation. So the idea is, well, we have all this structure and it looks like a semantic derivation. Why don't we just put semantics in it? Because when we do, when you take a semantics class and you do, do these relative clauses, and you know dependencies, they look exactly like syntactic dependencies. Why don't we think of these as the same thing? Well, they are the same thing. Um, so let's talk about cartography, which is similar. Uh, so of course, Chinque and other uh, linguists have gone into the sort of semantic structure behind languages, and pretty much all of them show the same things. Uh, there are very detailed semantic categories that appear in particular orders in all human languages. So what was traditionally called CP and TP are really very expounded uh, categories that have very specific meanings in them. Uh, noun phrases in adjective orders have very specific orderings. Prepositional structures, same thing. And if you assume merge just puts things together in whatever order, this is a really weird coincidence. Um, so, oh, well here, this is just cartographies. Uh, so, you know, these are like, uh, you know, adverbs are in this particular hierarchical order. Manner adverbs are going to be lower in the structure than perspective adverbs, stuff like this. And this holds, you know, Cinque's original stuff is, you know, on like 75 different languages, and they all show the same order and stuff like that. Um, and you have for argument structure, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so the problem is that merge recursion as the narrow language faculty is too powerful and too complex. It implies that animals basically have to be cretins, that they don't do anything, like they can't really have any kind of thought behind them. Um, and as Cinque notes, he used, I hate this word universal grammar because no one understands what it means, but we'll just say the language faculty has a relatively rich content, far richer in fact than most people are, are used to and perhaps willing to assume. And he's referring to this complexity here. There's an enormous amount of complexity uh, that ex seems to have come from nowhere if you assume, assume that merge generates it all. So, merge can't, <clears throat> merge doesn't need, just need to combine, it has to know all of these orders. So it's not just one operation, it's actually a very complex uh, operation. So my answer, and I think the answer of a lot of people, uh, uh, but to put it in words is this, uh, is that you don't need an operation called merge, you need an operation called externalize. Uh, that's to say that we should assume that these semantic structures that we use to analyze the world exist not only in humans but in non-human animals that are cognitively similar to us. Uh, so they have re uh, recursive ability to understand events, relative clauses. They don't have them explicitly, but you know they have mental analogs. Um, and it's an epiphenomenon of how their brains are arranged. This is you know just you know uh, speculation, but it's you know speculation we're working into. Um, but what's unique about human cognition is that we can externalize the structure. So our brains have been arranged in this way. What the language faculty is, is a mechanism which links these sort of lower, uh, these lower mental processes into you know, con the conscious mind so we can externalize them and stuff like that. Uh, so well, time for the green smiley faces, which half of you guys have seen already. Um, so my idea is basically that you know, there are cartographies in your brain, and when you want to enunciate a DP or something like that, you really just have this uh, externalized operation, just go up it and say, okay, what do I wanna say in all of this? So it goes up and the adjectives are arranged in a particular order depending on uh, what they are, uh, or you know, um, which ones you need, whatever. And again, the same thing is true in morphology. This is a Korean example. Uh, if you have, um, you know, agglutinative morphology, you see the exact same thing, same order. It's just an issue of an externalization. Um, so. so in a nutshell, um, all animals have evolved a series of mental heuristics for making cognitive distinctions and recursion. So I'm just gonna say that animals are not stupid. Animals have basically similar cognitive apparatus, apparatus. it's a fourth declension, isn't it? Apparatus, 
that would be the proper plural. Uh, anyway, I think. Um, this, so animals pretty much have the same uh, 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 cognitive repertoire as us. The big difference, well, and this repertoire is mostly non-conscious, when they analyze events and things, uh, their mind, of course, addresses them in this way, and they make decisions at a non-conscious level and react to them. But our language faculty is an externalization scheme, and I guess it's sort of like what you would call synesthesia. So synesthesia is where you like, you know, hear colors or smell tastes or something like that. Uh, it's it's a it's a merger of this sort of cognitive processing system with uh, motor and naming systems. So you sort of have this merger of these two systems, and what you get is that this lower portion of cognition is sort of sort of bubbles up into the conscious mind, and we can actually externalize it. Um, so this allows otherwise non-conscious thoughts to be externalized into the world and importantly in our brain. So we can actually have like metacognition uh, and things like this. That's one of the huge advantages, as Chomsky notes, this is one of the huge advantages to language. We can actually think about language in our head, contemplate events and things like that. Uh, and that's a huge benefit of it. Uh, so the end result uh, is that I feel like this sort of reconception has pretty much all the desiderata of you know, a theory of grammar. Uh, again, the narrow language faculty is mechanistically small, meaning it's something that can actually have evolved over the past five million years or so that we need. It's not like merge, which has to be incredibly complex and has to basically have all the cartographies embedded in it implicitly, uh, stuff like that. Um, and it also implies that animals are sort of uh, stupid. Um, and syntax, uh, I think, in my idea, syntax becomes the study of the cartography as structure. So, like, what order do you have, you know, these kind of adverbs, prepositions, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and importantly, in some way, this is a window into human cognition because it's showing us that our mind has a set way of analyzing events, and that can conceivably tell us how mental algorithms have evolved to address the external world. So, if you go back to the cartography, which I I'll do later. Um, if you go back to the cartographies, there might be a particular reason that they are in a certain order. It might be because they have evolved in a particular way or because of natural law constraints or something like that. Um, and one of my favorites is that uh, because syntax is tied to a set structure, it suddenly becomes falsifiable. That means you can actually make scientific statements about syntax. You can't just say, oh, well, this doesn't work. Let's just, oh, AP, this is an AP, this is an XP, this is an FP. There are all these structures that are just mean nothing. Um, so that, that's a nice benefit, like actual falsifiability. That's new. Um, so that's, um, yeah, so that's the, how much time do I have? Okay, well, fine. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, I was going to go into more, but... Um, uh, yeah, so uh, it's good to quote your colleagues when they uh, cite you, so I'm going to do that. Um, you know, merchant yesterday said, hey, Luke, we're going to be moving to my house. Stop working on your presentation and come join us. Um, so I'm going to leave the rest of the time for questions because, you know, that's all I got. And it, it, I hope that made at least a modicum of sense. So that's it. Yeah. Uh, basically, yes. So uh, if, if it's not clear, what I was trying to say is that over the course of bajillions of years of evolution, we have developed algorithms for addressing these kind of semantic things. Uh, and the order we find them in is just a sort of uh, uh, an emergent property of the fact they're being externalized based on their sort of ordering, if that makes sense. Is, is there any sort of evidence that the same hierarchy exists in animals as well? Uh, that would be very hard to find evidence for uh, in terms of like the actual ordering. But I, I think, again, uh, Gallistel's work, which he has a lot of interesting stuff. He can't, I mean, I don't know how you would do actual ordering here, but it is sort of clear that they do have things like argument structure and they might have similar categories. So I don't know how to test that unless you have some brilliant idea. So, Mr. Doug. <laughs> 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 okay, Doug, yeah. 
So, Nimchevsky, Washo, Koko, yeah, okay. they lack externalization? Um, so, yeah. So, but they... they externalize work. So, yeah. Well, there are two ways you can interpret, interpret that. You can say, on one sense, their reactions are just behavioristic. They're just learning, okay, I make these signs and you know, I get a response. That's one possibility. Another is that they, have, they can develop gradually this sort of uh, relationship between meaning and externalization, but it's not, or, or you know, some kind of phonetic realization. Uh, but it's not like there's an actual algorithm like the green smiley face that's going through all of the structure, you know, forcing it out. So it's not, it's... Okay, but if they can learn some words... If they can't... If they can yeah. learn some words, which they appear to be able to, yeah. uh, then what's preventing them from forming merge structures, if not merge? Well, if Why you, is it that we doubt that Washo said water burn meaning duck? Well, because if you don't have it externalizing, you know, sort of algorithmically, uh, you can't have, I mean, you can't have particular orders of objects and direct objects and you know it, stuff like that. You can't really have, you could theoretically have the externalization of individual words, but it wouldn't necessarily have any rhyme or reason to it. It just sounds like you're, you're saying that they lack syntax. That's, that's what it sounds like you're saying, even though you're saying that they actually have syntax. Uh, I mean, it, it, okay, there are, well, let me put it this way. The brain does a lot of things, and we're not always consciously aware of them. You know what I mean? So uh, my, my whole point is that this is something, you know, th this sort of uh, quote-unquote syntactic processing is happening in all animals, but we just have this extra algorithm that, you know, computationally externalizes them. Okay, so uh, it, in the same way, it's like the difference between a first and second language learner. There are different cognitive processes that are working on this to address similar problems, and the output is totally different. And it's a lot more salient in this example. Yeah? I just kind of wanted to build on your comment. It's been a while since I've read uh, Yeah. I've played it all the Jack and Box and stuff. Yeah. But, um, so, so they discuss uh, the numbers of monkeys or something where yeah. they, they, they can say, they can put words together to mean an aerial raptor. And so it's like boom, boom, clap, and so like boom, clap, boom, or something. And they, and they can generalize, is the predator coming from the air, is it coming from the land, where should I go? And so I just, so when you said it just sounds like a like syntax, I just wanted to know, in your opinion, do you think then that humans with this extra ability where we can rearrange yeah. the things to make new things, so we don't have to say aerial raptor, we can say really stylish aerial raptor. Yeah. Is that just because they increase uh, so, I, are you thinking of vervet monkeys? Is that what you're I, thinking I, of? I, I don't remember. I mean, it's been, it's been since the early 2000s. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, so vervet monkeys, vervet monkeys, you know, have set calls for predators depending on their uh, location. Uh, and I would say, sort of what I said to Doug's, that's probably a behavioristic response. It's not like their calls have specific truth functional, you know, content. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's not really the same thing. It's something that looks like language to us because we're humans, but it's probably just some other, I mean, it's as related as B communication. You know what I mean? Um, so does the human difference just increase cognition? Well, I mean, the human difference is we can externalize the, I mean, I'm, I, I would say that what they're doing is not related to this at all. I would say it's just like, you know, they have a, ref they develop a, a reflex, a sort of cultural reflex based on, you know, sort of behavioristic things. Uh, so it's not really the same. Uh, yeah, Jason. <laughs> It's, it might not be, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The implication would be that what they're doing, or what we're doing, is taking these abstract arguments and then gelling them into something that we can actually process and manipulate as a concrete symbol yeah. in the mind. Yeah. Uh, which would be the suit between what the animals are doing. So they do yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, I will say, um, you know, one of the big differences for Chomsky, you know, Chomsky's idea is that language exists not for communication. He'll get, he gets really pissy when people say that. He'll say that the purpose of language is to organize thought. And even my model does the same thing because, yes, you have this semantic processing, but it's actually bringing it, it into the realm of, like, metacognition. You can actually think, you can analyze your own thoughts and sort of think of them again. So, if that's what you mean. Yeah. Yeah. System. You mentioned that you use DOS. Uh, 
uh, is very vague on whether or not all languages have the same hierarchy for that. Who is? Oh, Gallistel? Gallistel. Gallistel. Um, he, no, it has nothing to do with cartography. He, he, was, he was the one who said, uh, you know, basically animals have merge-like structure. It's like specific things that, like Chomsky said, okay, the language faculty basically gives us the ability to count, argument structure, things like this. Gallistel says, the empirical evidence says that's not true. Okay, so, so this is Cinque, this is like Cinque, Rizzi, uh, I will yap on to you for ages about this if you ask me later. Um, sweet. Yeah. It seems like you're getting uh, something similar to type factor. Yeah. Um, well, you know, parts of speech might be totally epiphenomenal. You know, it might. Uh, who, I don't believe in them. I don't, I don't believe in grammar. I don't know. Um, yeah. Yeah, the why? Nothing about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, not syntax. The lexicon, yeah. So, just to say that there's nothing about syntax. They did somehow. Lexicon, the yeah. So the lexicon is an input to syntax. It's something feeding into it. But I mean, like in the sense that syntax in this model, syntax is the thing that generates what you want to say, basically. So what I'm saying is that what you really need is a. Uh, I mean, I mean, think about it. Whenever you say something, you're saying it for a reason. You don't just uh, mumble a bunch of sort of like postmodern diatribes of sentences. Uh, you say things with particular reasons. And Chomsky models this the wrong way because he's sort of implying that meaning is generated after syntax or something, which doesn't even make sense. So yeah, there is something visually above syntax, but that, that's something different. That's just like feeding into the syntax system. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, my, my point was simply their model has to account for why the harvest was clever to agree is ungrammatical. Um, but in reality, you don't even need that because you wouldn't even want to say something like that. You know, and the problem with the sentence isn't C selection or something. It's, it doesn't make sense. It, it's the semantics, not syntax. Groovy. You have any questions, Mike? I just wanted to say groovy. Oh, uh, yeah. No, it's fun to have Luke back for a few days. Thanks, Officer. Yeah. the great fortune to see Hunter Thompson speak at uh, um, San Diego State once, and he came on stage with a bottle of scotch. Uh, it's okay. And um, you, and he just rocked the place. And I said, this is very relevant to that. And I said, it's a very relevant to that. So I just wanted to call this very engaging. And um, I would like to talk to you. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> 